Hello, Curran here. This video is all about how to make this pentagon right here with D3 and JavaScript and math. So I think this is a nice little programming puzzle, if you will. I think it sort of is a good example of how you can use the mathematical nature of a shape to programmatically generate the points and the lines and things so you don't have to type out you know, a list of coordinates. So let's dive in. I'm going to start by using Block Builder and starting from this fresh block. The first thing I'll do is change the title, get rid of this boilerplate code, and save it. Next I'll create an SVG element and give it a width and a height. Then I'll write some code to select this SVG element and extract its width and height into variables. Now let's strategize a little bit. How are we going to do this? Well, when I see this, I see a bunch of points that are oriented around a circle. So my first thought is, okay, let's create a list of five things and then map that list onto these x and y coordinates for these points by using a sine and cosine which will give you the position of something around a circle based on the angle. We can create an array of integers by using d3.range and I'll say d3.range num points and set num points to be 5. Let's take a look at what this array contains. If we say console.log points, we can see that indeed it's this array of integers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. To transform this array of integers into an array of objects that each have x and y, I'm going to use array.map and pass in a function that takes as input i, the integer or the index, and returns an object that contains properties x and y. And we just need to wrap this object in parentheses to tell the uh, ES6 syntax that, okay, this is a function that returns this object. As a first stab at this, I'm going to say, okay, x is the sine of i and y is the cosine of i. But that's not quite right, actually, because sine and cosine operate on angles. So we need to compute an angle from the index. Alright, so we can make this into a function body where we declare this variable angle and set it to be i divided by the number of points, which gives us a number between 0 and 1, and then we multiply that by 2 pi, which is the angle around the complete circle. And then we can pass this angle value into sine and cosine to derive our x and y. We can create a data join by saying svg.selectallcircle.data points and then use the enter selection to say okay for each of these points append a new circle element and then set the cx and cy attributes by extracting the x and y properties from our data elements and then set the radius to be a fixed 10 pixels. When we run this, we see that all our circles are in the upper left corner. Well, this makes sense because X and Y here are between like 0 and 1, so they're just like all in the same spot. We can address this by scaling and transforming these points. We can center our points in the middle of the screen by first computing a center X and center Y as width divided by 2 and height divided by 2 and then we can translate our x and y positions by those coordinates by adding center x and center y to our x and y coordinates for each circle. Now our circles are in the center of the screen but they outline such a tiny circle that you can't even see it. So let's make the circle that they outline a larger circle. 
Let's declare a new variable called radius for the radius of the circle that we're outlining with these points and let's set it to width divided by 3. If we multiply our sine and cosine values by this radius, we're scaling these circles by the radius with respect to the origin of the circle that they outline. Oh no, this is too big, so let's try um, height divided by 3, because the height is smaller than the width. Alright, that looks good. Now we have a pentagon outlined with circles. If you compare this to the original though, you see that on the original the bottom line is flat, but in ours it's the top that's flat. So we can fix this by just adding pi to our angle. There we go, that's the orientation that we're after. So how can we get from there to here? Well, let's start by categorizing these lines. I'd say the inner lines are kind of like spokes of a bicycle wheel. And then the outer lines are, I would say, like the wheel lines. And we're going to have to compute these sets of lines differently. Let's start by computing the spokes. We can say const spokes equals points dot map a function that takes as input each point and returns some object. But what does each of these returned objects really mean? Well, each of these returned objects is going to be a line. And a line is a pair of coordinates. x1, y1, and then x2, y2. The first point of our line is going to be the center point. And then the second point of our line is going to be the point that we're working with, the point that's passed in from the points.map. Now let's change around our D3 code here to create lines instead of circles. We can say select all line, append line, and then change around these attributes so that it just sets the x1, y1, x2, y2 from our objects in the spokes. In order to get something to show up for these lines we need to set the stroke to be black. And also we need to pass in as the data to the data join spokes instead of points. Alright, now we're rendering these spokes. In the original these spokes are a little bit thicker so we can just change the stroke width here to make it appear a little bit more thick. Alright, we've got the spokes. Now we have to deal with these wheel lines around the outside. Let's start by saying wheel lines equals d3.range 4.map some function that transforms that index into an object. And I'm using 4 not 5 here because we're going to want to deal with pairs of points and we don't want to overrun the bounds of the array. To compute the lines for each pair of adjacent points we can say x1 and y1 is based on points at index i but then x2 y2 is based on points at index i plus 1. To render this we can pass wheel lines into our data join here instead of spokes. Alright, so what we're left with here though is not all of the wheel lines. It doesn't quite close the gap. We have the connection between each adjacent pair and the only thing that's missing is the connection between the last point and the first point. We can address this by saying, okay, we're going to use index i plus 1 modulo num points so that when this value i plus 1 gets to be equal to the number of points it will actually loop back to 0 instead of overrunning the bounds of the array. This is how we can use modulo to connect the last point to the first point. Alright, so now we can either render wheel lines or spokes wheel lines 
or spokes. But how do we render these both at the same time? Well, we can just concatenate these two arrays together by saying lines equals spokes dot concat wheel lines. This will give us an array called lines that contains all elements from both arrays. Then we can pass that into our data join and what we're left with is the complete pentagon. All right, there we have it. That's how you can use D3, JavaScript, and little bits of math here and there to draw a pentagon. I challenge you to fork this block and make it draw other kinds of gons, you know, hexagons or octagons. Maybe you could even have it draw a bunch of little polygons, all the different numbers that there could possibly be. Good luck. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial.